Hello, album enjoyers. Thank you so much for listening. We're here very quickly to plug the Enjoy Earn album Patreon. First off, thank you so much for everyone who has already signed up. Which Overwhelming. Is, yes, thank you. We're really, really pleased. Uh, it means that we can continue to improve the podcast in ways that we uh, had only uh, imagined as a possibility. We're way ahead of schedule on that, so thank you. Um, for £5 a month, uh, you get uh, two extra episodes a month, sometimes three. If the weeks land in the right way, you get one an episode, extra an extra episode every two weeks. Um, I didn't know that, but that's cool. Yes. Uh, you also... Uh, we're 24 gonna... hour at least early access to every episode. Yes. Uh, without adverts, without Patreon plugs. It's fucking class. That's what I listen to. Not only that... You get yeah, you get two bonus reps every yep. fucking and, month, man. And, and, uh, and we try harder on those ones. Yeah, if I'm honest. we've got some live shows uh, coming up as well, and you will get uh, early I haven't access. Heard about that. I haven't heard you will about get that. pre-sale to to those. Um, so lots of exciting reasons to sign up. Uh, also, or you get access to the ones that we've already done. We've done the darkness. We've done uh, Robbie Williams. Yes, Hamilton by mm-hmm. Lin Manuel Miranda. Uh, Mogwai. Yes, the Flaming Lips. The uh, Flaming Lips. Yeah, loads of good ones already there. Your classic album episodes uh, hidden behind a secret door that only uh, your Patreon membership can access. And so, you can actually vote on what Patreon ones. We're yes, yes. So the, the patrons have signed up. Uh, uh, and uh, you can ask questions. That we'll answer in the and you can the discuss stuff with the larger Enjoy an Album community. So do get and signed what up. Like the community is. Yes, it's five pound a month uh, or ten pound a month if you're extra sound. Um, so we'll leave you to do that at patreoncom slash Enjoy an Album, and uh, we hope you enjoy the episode. Until then, thank you so much. Become an ultra. What's the question this week, bro? Uh, question from Mega Slippers over on the Patreon page. Shout out to Mega Slippers, long time album enjoy, long you, time ultra. You rub a discount lamp. A genie emerges and gives you the chance to fire one person from any band, but only if, it, if that would improve the band. <laughs> Who gets the job? So you're not allowed to remove someone from a band that would make the band worse. Yes. So it has to be someone who you think their presence makes a band worse. So if you're firing them. I mean, my answer is... I, I have to say, I think the, the context of the genie narrative, I think is probably unnecessary to the question. Okay. I think the, the use of the gene in fiction is a fantastic difference. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan of the genes out there, my anti gene especially. Uh, what I will say is there is a song by, uh, do you know the, the noise band Sun O, end bracket, end bracket, end bracket, end bracket. Sun bracket. Smiley Face. Yes. Well, I don't think that's what they're called. <laughs> it, is, it is a smiley face. It's not. It is? Let me check. 100% it is. That's the idea if that's a smiley face. No, it's, that's not the idea. That is the idea. It's not the idea. The idea is that it's an amplifier. It's the name of an amplifier and it has it's a stylized I've, logo. I've heard them talk about it and say that it's a smiley face. They were taking the piss out of you. You're, so you're basing that on something that you've never heard before over something that I've heard them say. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm not saying this is necessarily my answer, but it's the most interesting answer. Right. They had a song, they had a cover of the Metallica song For Whom the Bell Tolls. Mm. Kind of, it's not really a cover, it's like a art piece Mm -hmm. and the song's called for whom the bell tolls so they called this song fwtbt colon open brackets i dream of lars ulrich being thrown out the bus window instead of my master mystical cliff burton so they put a song out called that right saying that when cliff burton the incredible bass player that we discussed on the green day episode Mm -hmm. when he died i wish the drummer lars ulrich died and i think that's a pretty mean thing to say it's an absolutely crazy thing see when your one of your best friends died i wish that was you instead yeah wild thing to say same public as well to name a song that yeah sano did that yeah they've gone way down in my estimation no i'm lars ulrich's about a piece of shit but still, that's we'll get to the Metall- Metallica episodes coming. By the way, we got a new album coming out. It's gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's my one. I would, I would just fucking get rid of Bez from the Happy Mondays. Could not. No. How would that? That wouldn't change the sound. You need to make the band better. I mean, not make the band worse. Was the. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it wouldn't. It wouldn't change the sound at all. Well, there you go. So I'll just get rid of him. No need for it. Why are you not like just Bez? to show off? Um, have you spoke to your pal Sean Reader about this? Yeah, well, I have actually. Yeah, we've, we're <laughs> it's there. Ah, um, yeah. I, I mean, it's a weird question, isn't it? It's one of these tough ones as well. Like, Mega slippers. I think that's my favourite question so far. What the fuck? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> um, this week. Did you see what he said about his bow tie? No. Idris Elba in 2014. Said, Idris. Would you call Idris? 
Idris Elba said in 2014, <laughs> he said, every time I tie my bow tie and smile, it makes my dick hard. <laughs> look, check it out, look up. Yeah, Idris Elba's into asphyxy wanks. Yeah, man. That's I cool. don't think he was saying it. Maybe it was that. I always took it just as, oh, I looked good. My dick was ronking, jajonking. Ron- anyway. Ronking. <laughs> my ronking chunk. Today on the podcast, we have fantastic comedian and uh, improviser and... Storyteller? Storyteller? Um and, and folk legend. Um, bet she loves the the the, the fictional device of the gene. Uh, yeah, I bet she does. <laughs> uh, Marilyn Robertson, um, friend of the pod, uh, Super Mario herself, to talk about Nelly Furtado's Whoa, Nelly. Um, she was a twitcher. It is a it is a, a, a wonderful episode full of twitchers. Um, Shetland's own Marilyn Robertson talking about Whoa, Nelly, boy, Nelly Furtado. <laughs> Yes, uh, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, we certainly enjoyed recording it. A lot of fun today was had. Um, enjoy the week. Coming up next is an advert for non-Patreons. Patrons, you get the episode right now. Enjoy. Patreons, you're taking the express train I, I just gave it such a perfect cut off every time. You are going quick to content. The other ones, they watch some adverts, sorry. Okay. Maybe if you join the Patreon, oh, you don't need to. Yes, okay. Chat in a bit. Bye. Rock and roll. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the numero uno product when it comes to shaving your bits. It's not the product, it's the brand. Oh, it's yeah. not just the product, baby. Yeah. We got the nose trimmer, the weed whacker. Weed whacker. You got the comfiest pair of pants I own. The lawn mower. Um, uh, uh, fellas, if you are tired of having little shaving mishaps when you're trying to tidy up your downstairs department, then 100% recommend the lawn mower. It's so quick. It's so easy. It's waterproof. You can charge it in with a USB-C, the same as my phone. If you're fed up your ball bag looking like Colonel Gaddafi's burst head. <laughs> <laughs> How about you get on the old manscaper <laughs> and your head... Manscaped! Manscaped. And, uh, Five months. Your ball bag will look like Professor Xavier's bald head. <laughs> Perfectly smooth. No burst bones or blood stains. Just good old-fashioned sleek balls. Um, and because surely such a uh, wonderful equipment would be expensive, would it not? That's the issue. <laughs> that is taken care of because if you're a fan of this podcast you get album 20 is the product code that allows you to get 20 percent 20 percent off all products that's uh, a yeah that's a lot it's a lot so uh make sure and also it's a way to support the pod whilst also supporting your own balls if you don't have balls that's fine maybe we might, might purchase them for a fun gift father's day's coming up they work on all genders yes you can shave anything with it a they cat should be called human a dog um a hedgehog don't shave hedgehogs in manscaped um, please do not do that because it's cruel and unusual yes uh but uh remember to use the code album 20 uh for your manscaped products and well thank you so much for listening to this sponsored part of the show you're listening to enjoy an album the podcast where two comedians listen to some of the greatest albums of all time one of the most impressive debut albums of the new millennium, 2000's Whoa Nelly effortlessly transcended musical genres as it introduced an artist of exceptional promise. Nelly Furtado makes it all look easy, pouring sophisticated street poetry into a savoury stew of folk, hip-hop, Latin and pop influences with a confidence that belies her 21 years. Pretty good. Phenomenal blurb. Who's, right. who's this actually, coming from? I'm tempted to read another sentence of it. Challenging <laughs> expectations on track after track, <laughs> she saunters through arrangements blending gentle acoustic guitar, rippling percussion, and steamy urban beats Ooh. with a brash and winning flair. It's uh, another sentence. This. this is great. Whether her supple vocals <laughs> convey waif-like dreaminess or inviting sensuality, she avoids diva-like poses in favour of an earthy, open-hearted persona. <sighs> Some of the best blurb smithing we've ever had. Yeah, and, uh, incredible. This week on the podcast, chooser of this week's album, we have none other than Marilyn Robertson. Marilyn Robertson, honk, 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 honk. That's me. So we were speaking about you being a guest, <laughs> and we agreed initially yeah. to do an album, um, Vulgar Display of Power by Pantera. Groove metal classic, and then I was actually thinking of a different Pantera album. What, what, what I think Cowboys like? from Hell. Cowboys from Hell, just as good, um, in my opinion. We'll get to that when you come back and do Pantera. 
uh, as God intended. But uh, we're not doing Pantera, we're doing Nelly for Tadal. So uh, can I tell you what happened? Okay. I was uh, uh, performing one evening at the, the Stand Comedy Club, um, as is my want. Mm-hmm. And, uh, not sponsors of the podcast. No, thank you. This is not at Stand Comedy Club Studios. It's at a different place, a Monkey Barrel Studios. <laughs> Uh, we're NB Heads for life, but we respect we our. Respect this thing. We respect all comedy clubs, yeah. especially ones that allow me to perform. Um, so I was there yes. performing some new material, and Mary Lane was also in the building, um, and I believe had I would use the word quaffed some red Ooh. wine. Um, Hoovered it off the floor <laughs> and uh, and approached me to talk about our upcoming uh, podcast episode, and she said that while she'd been in Shetland, she'd been reminded of one of her first um, album loves, mm-hmm. none other than Woe Nelly by Nelly Furtado, and that actually maybe this was an album she should cover instead. And I said, well, you can choose whatever album you like, Mary Lane. I'm sure it'll be a fun episode regardless. Yep. Um, and, uh, and Mary Lane uh, then drunkenly recorded a message um, in the hope that we would both remember this agreement, forgetting that I'm a sober person, so we're likely to remember it anyway yeah, in the yeah. morning. Uh, Marilyn, are you going to play this message now? So in my memory, Liam forced me that night to agree to this. Right. I have a very different memory, but wow. who will know who is more reliable the night that that happened? But I recorded this message. So this is just me by myself <laughs> in the porch of the club. I was trying to leave. Well, Liam was inside trying to leave, but You're when I started porch? recording the message, then Liam's still speaking to someone else. So um, this is how it goes. Multimedia. Um, so Liam with Neil is about to leave the premises and he's like, I'm going to I don't have time for this. And I'm like, okay, but now that I'm waiting for him at the door, he's not leaving, he's speaking to other folk. In fact, the longer he keeps speaking to other folk, the more likely this segment will never make it into this podcast. Hi, I'm Mylene and you're listening to <laughs> What's the Album <laughs> with Liam with Neil and Comb. Oh my god, Alright, I'm in trouble now. Maybe I can pause this. I'm gonna pause this with the power of technology and come back when Liam's ready. Hi, I'm Marilyn Robertson, although I'm gonna regret this later. Agree to choose Nelly Furtado's first album as my album for the podcast. Bye bye. What do you want me to say here? Uh, well, well, should I or should I pick? Because I was going to pick Pantera or Megadeth, but should I pick Nelly Furtado? It's, well, it's up to you, but I'll talk to Chris and we'll, we'll all decide together. Really? Because it also decides, depends on what will work as a... Where is this going? To your inbox. Okay, great. Right. I look forward to that. All right. Good night. That was sarcasm. Bye. See you later. Whoa, See you later. Nelly. <laughs> I don't feel supported in this. <laughs> Whoa, Nelly! Yeah, so... Um, Great way to start the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're doing Whoa, Nelly instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So wh- I think wh- I do remember one thing I said to you that night. You told me a story about um, your uh, having this album in school. Yeah, so I bought this album. It was one of the first albums I ever bought for myself. Not the first. Which but- was? <sighs> Hearsay. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pure and simple. I'll be, uh-huh. there. I'll I'll be there. there for you. Pure, pure and simple. simple. Gonna be there. Tobin, do you know Hearsay? No. No. Okay. <laughs> R- research for this week. Go listen to some Hearsay and come back when you sit your white ass down and listen to some Hearsay. Sit your white Canadian ass down and listen <laughs> to Hearsay. Yes. Okay. My apologies. Do you know Sorry. Liberty X? What was uh, that? No. One? Okay. What are they teaching you over there? Yeah. Uh, bare naked ladies in Nickelback. <laughs> oh yeah, and okay. Nelly Furtado. Mm. Oh, yeah, I've seen her little star in Canada. But yeah, so I am. Um... <laughs> You've seen her little star in Canada. <laughs> yeah. What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly how it sounds. I had a day <laughs> coming back from Cuba, but I got like twelve hours in Toronto. Mm. Um, except the twelve hours got like shortened down to like five because. When they saw my passport, they're like, you're in Cuba. I was like, uh-huh. And then they flipped back a few pages, like, you're just in Russia. And I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they said, why were you in Russia? And I said, gigging. But legally, I was there visiting because I didn't have the right visa. Mm. So I said, uh, seeing friends. <laughs> and then I got questioned for six hours. Right. No wonder you're a big fucking communist. Jesus yeah. Christ. Well, they wanted to search my suitcase. And I was like, uh-oh, because I have an illegal amount of cigars in my suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> but it's delirious because I've been traveling for so long and the whole time I was in Cuba I had a bad belly so I hadn't eaten or kept food in for 10 days yep so um what are cigars 
So <laughs> small to me, it's like, gives you diarrhea, don't you? <laughs> but yeah, so when we, when I got through the questioning, they eventually realised that I wasn't a like, spy. A spy. <laughs> Red under the bed. Like the last thing we have to do is search your suitcase. Um, we need your suitcase. Do you have a suitcase on the plane? And I was like, well, yeah, but it's on the suitcase plane. And they're like, what? And I was like, yeah, well, I put my suitcase on the plane in Cuba, and I won't see my suitcase again till Edinburgh because it's the suitcase plane. Mm-hmm. And I was just delirious by this point. So did you think that there's a separate plane for suitcases? At this point, I did, and the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're trying to interview you on a podcast and it's difficult enough. I can't imagine what customs and excise has to fucking cope with. It's on the suitcase plane. What? Well, yeah, he laughed at me so hard because I was like, you know, you get passenger ferry and freight boat. Right. Yeah. And then he laughed so hard. He's like, just get out of here. (laughs) So they never found my legal amount of cigars or rum. And uh, I went to Nelly's Star. So exactly how it's. So there's like a sort of Hollywood um, Walk of uh, Fame style thing in Toronto, and Nelly Furtado yeah. has a has a star on it. All these people you thought were American. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, but let's let's try and now this will be one of those episodes where I have two people with ADHD on the table. So I'm going to try and circle back to where we started the uh, story you told me about in school in Shetland and Nelly uh, Furtado. Right. Yeah. So basically, I I bought this CD and I loved it so much that I took it into school so often that I got banned from taking it to school and playing it because by it, who. Just the music teacher and the art teacher. <laughs> you told me there was a specific rule, which is Mary Lane is not allowed to bring... Yeah, because yeah. you were allowed to take your CDs into... A certain, a certain classes that allowed CDs played were allowed to take your CDs in and play them. And I wasn't allowed to. And I had this little disc player of speakers and they were just like, don't take Nelly Furtado in school anymore. You're not allowed to take that CD in school. Mm. Nelly Furtado banned from... Shetland Comprehensive. When are the walk police going to fucking rein it in, <laughs> guys? Limp Biscuit was allowed. <laughs> That's wow. surprising. I know, corn was allowed. Parental advisory? She doesn't have one. No, she should, with some of the so swearing much. on this record. I love her so much. You like her so much. What was it that drew, would you think it was that drew you to Nelly Furtado? Do you remember the first time you heard her? I kind of mind the first time I heard her, but I just love that bird song so much. I think I liked how different things were, because it wasn't just a song about like love or breakups or something. She's just like in her own magical land being a bird and I was like that one Maybe well, all I need for you to I'm like a bird I always fly away but it's a metaphor isn't it she's not talking about actually being a bird she's talking about <laughs> a sort of element of freedom no it's animorphs <laughs> this is an animorphs <laughs> thing isn't it on the front cover in the library she's you get nesting. the wee women turning you, into you a bird that where you'd flick the pages in the corner of the animorphs and it would slowly turn into a yeah, they're always hottest animal. halfway through transition right <laughs> aren't we all um, I, I, I remember the first time I heard uh, Nelly Furtado was also the I'm like a bird I always fly away And I remember I actually penned a hilarious um, sort of parody I'm like a toad I'm like a worm <laughs> <laughs> I squiggle and I squirm I don't know where my tail is Which I think you can, we can all agree Pretty exceptional patter for an 11 year old I'm like a worm I squiggle and I squirm I don't know where my tail is I don't when, know where my head is. When does a worm's tail start? Halfway. Okay. Well, I don't know. That's the point of the song. <laughs> they just start out. It's, a, philo- it's a philosophical uh, you know, meandering on the nature of the worm. Yeah. I, I love that bird. This, I love that bird. <laughs> <laughs> I love that bird. <laughs> I'm talking about Nelly. Uh, no, I love the song. I'm like a bird. I just remember listening to it when I was a wee boy in the car with my mum. And dad, and, and I was like, you, oh, come on, I'm trying to tell a beautiful story. This is the time you choose to crack open your frosted condensation coated can of Diet Coke. Listen, you freak. I, I wanted to, I, I was enjoying your, the, what you were saying, and I wanted to, to feel as good as I, uh, as I was. <laughs> wizard, wizard. I, uh, <laughs> I remember being in the car with my mum and dad, and we were, um, we were listening to it and I was like, that's great. I had the same thing. You had, I genuinely thought she was like, I'm like a bird that always fly away. Um, but they were like, no, it's a metaphor for freedom and being a free spirit. And uh, I was like, oh. I don't like it. I want a new album. You want one way she just, <laughs> song by song, she just sings, I'm like a tiger. you like a tiger? Tiger. Oh. Or just, just, I am a bird. Fa, 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 fa. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I also, I mean, remember, was it, by the way, was there any other rules in your school about you? I feel like there would be. <laughs> Marilyn's not allowed to dress as a bird. <laughs> um, 
Well, no, but when I was in primary school, I had this teddy that I really liked. It was Babe, as in... The pig? Yep, the sheepdog Babe. Pig in the city? Yep, not that one, the first one. Okay. And uh, good as well. I really, I never watched it. Good. I okay. didn't like the idea. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> Why are all these stories focused on urban stories? When are the rural pig stories going to get told? The BBC is so fucking... It's not actually about a pig. It's about freedom, really. It's a metaphor. (laughs) I don't know where my pig is. I'm like a dog. Oink, 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 oink. (laughs) That is the plot. That is the plot. That'll do, Nelly. That'll do. Yeah, uh, so I used to take this teddy with me everywhere, and I even had a school bag for Babe, and I even had, like, I remade all the class textbooks and tiny pity books and put them in the bag, and then when it was reading time, I'd, like, wait, wait, and I'd get Babe out, and I'd open the bag and take the book out. That's great. I was eight. And <laughs> and then I think I was up to nine years old when I still work with Babe in school, and there's a, a big wall for break times where if you wanted to, like, Hire the hula hoop or something. <laughs> you, yeah. you put your name in. You everyone's names were in cards, and you're allowed to hire something at break time. So like the hula hoop or the big jump rope or something. Mm. And uh, Babe was allowed to have Babe's own name amongst the whole school system of names. <laughs> right, Babe got to hire something. But then as well. somebody changed it to Bacon, and I cried. <laughs> <laughs> so just because the idea, someone someone went to eat your plush pig. Yeah. Fuck me, man. You have any rules at school about you? Uh, no, I went to a London comprehensive, <laughs> not not a, a, a remote <laughs> island school of eight people. <laughs> I also there's another thing about me I forgot about where um you know at nurseries when there's like two door handles. No, no. Okay, so maybe this That's is a barn. this is definitely a, a this barn. is definitely because of me because in Shetland um. One time my mum was going to go pick me up from crash in town and she had this like, da, 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 da. and I was just like running away Wait, from what, the nursery. What was, what was that? And my feet steps. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a dog who smells bacon. I'll eat limbs. Door. It's babe, please. <laughs> so. I escaped from my own crash at like the age of three or something. Mm. Right. And after that they had to put secondary door handles on the door. Oh, I remember that in the soft play in Morrison's. Yeah, I remember a secondary, you, you would tug on the door and they go, no, it's two handles because it's a, a soft play. Yeah, okay. I right, okay. That. You sound like a feral child, Marilyn, just sort of running around listening to Nelly Furtado with your babe plush. <laughs> Are you familiar with a thing we do in this episode, my, uh, Marilyn? Uh, not in this episode, in this podcast called uh, Secret Posho. Oh, I've not heard that one. Oh my God. Yeah, okay. Secret Posho, Liam. Am I doing the jingle? Oh, wait. No. I'm doing it. Yeah. Secret pie show. Secret, secret pie show. You do it fast and it feels like not nice. you got no money. You got Dutch bro. Secret pie show. In Secret pie show, we delve into the background of an artist and uh, examine how potentially secretly affluent they were growing up and whether that affects your You're aware of this new phenomenon of uh, Nepo babies. Um, we were discussing Nepo babies. I heard your joke about it. Long before. What was my joke about You it? made a joke and you got so annoyed that Gareth and CMB didn't hear it that you repeated it. I don't remember. What was that? On the Final Fantasy episode? Yeah. Okay, right. Well, I mean, you, listeners can go back and listen to <laughs> and enjoy that joke. Um, so we... Um, <laughs> Just a little background check on Nelly Furtado. She was born. Can I guess? <laughs> or wait, do we yeah, sure? No, yeah, yeah, when sure. do we guess that she's secret partial? Yes. Like she doesn't act like she is, and she doesn't sing like she is. Mm. But I once heard a story about a family get together, which makes me think they are wealthy. <laughs> because they had a family get together <laughs> where there was a goat, what? and they were going to kill the goat and eat it. And Nelly and her cousins and siblings freed the goat. Right. And I was like, that seems like a rich person's activity when you kill the goat on sight. You think a working class family would keep the goat alive? No, I think that, you know, I it just sounded like a fancy spit roast, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like like, like a, a roast, like when you kill a pig and you have it in a big oh, garden yeah, and yeah, you all eat yeah. the pig. Yeah, but there's this thing with like, a, you know, sort of big families, especially in like, uh, you know, they are Canadian, but like in North America of... 
you know, I don't think that's necessarily... I think it depends where you are. You, if, I think we could, if we could goats, kill an entire sheep every time we're having a get-together, we'd be doing well. Do you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah, big time, yeah, yeah. But mean, you, a but shoulder you're pro- roast is a big deal. Yeah, you'd, you'd be able to get your hands on a sheep for a big family do they wouldn't you but own sheep yeah but a whole sheep that's a lot of meat that's like <laughs> you know you're not going to kill one sheep for one party no yeah. unless it's a wedding then you might kill six wow but that's a big deal uh, okay yeah. maybe actually i don't think she's posh <laughs> <laughs> you know what now we're talking about now we worked out livestock being murdered uh, a family get together i don't think she's that posh um she was born in victoria in british columbia um, her father was a stonemason and her mother a hotel maid. Um, they're both, her, both her parents are originally from the Azores, the, politi- the Azores. Um, Portuguese archipelago, oh. um, out in the middle of fucking nowhere. It's yeah. like hundreds of miles off the coast. So uh, they're uh, island, islanders. Island boy, gonna give me that island toy, gonna give me that two stroke thing, gonna get that island thing. Um, she was named after Soviet gymnast Nelly Kim. So her full name is Nelly Kim Furtado. Are you not a Soviet gymnast? Or is that just what passport people assume? That's, that's <laughs> why I had to say. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I was visiting friends for it, slash being injected with Soviet ne- ne- serums. Nelly Kim was the... <laughs> it's um, like a good time. <laughs> I was trying to make it sound less sexual. <laughs> I wasn't saying that you were getting pumped. Pregnant I was talking sounds. about drugs. <laughs> Nelly Kim was uh, the second ever athlete to achieve a perfect 10 at the Olympics. <gasps> who was uh, the first? Um, Good question, Liam. Who was the first Olympic who got a perfect 10? Have you done your research or not? Yes, oh, I have you got your done tablet. my research. And I will tell you... You can't see Corbin's laptop over there. You can't that, that the person who got the first perfect 10 was called... Do it in my accent, Corbin. Hello, my name is Liam Withnail. Welcome to the show. Oh, sorry. Uh, N- Nadia Komenechi. Komenechi, yes. Um, who is the one that, but that, I mean, that was the first perfect turn. That was a big deal. My Nadia. And uh, and and this lady, uh, Nelly Kim, somewhat forgotten by the world at large, but not by the gymnastics community. No, who were like, no, no, no. she's the second person to get the perfect yeah. 10, so it's not spoken about as much. Um, it's like being the second man on the moon. Yeah. Neil yeah. Armstrong and what's the other one? <laughs> Coffee, coffee McGee. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Coffee and Anne was on the moon. Yeah, Coffee, coffee and Anne. So busy. So um, such a busy boy, that Coffee and Anne. Nelly spent eight summers working with her mother as a chambermaid. Um, she went to a, a normal school, Mount Douglas School. No and, bullshit. and then when she left school, she worked at an alarm company in Toronto. Um, which That's is, why she's like a bird. Yeah. Like, I'm like a cockroach. I always wake up at five. <laughs> I don't know where my soul is, but I know what the tab is. <laughs> uh, she always had a talent for music. She sang at a talent show in Toronto where she met a band called the Philosopher Kings. Can I just say, one of the worst fucking band names I've ever heard in my life. Really? The Philosopher Kings. It sounds like a podcast, doesn't it? Sounds like me and you. Yo, you're tuning into the Philosopher Kings. This week, we're going to be doing a deep dive on Foucault. Change. And is it all women's fault? We will get into that. <laughs> Change the channel. Change the channel, please. Um, Jordan Peterson's a guest on the Philosopher Kings. <laughs> but the Philosopher Kings, they um, they loved Nelly's voice and they got her in the studio, sent off some demos um, and she basically got picked up a recording contract straight away with DreamWorks. Um, also known for Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like an ogre. <laughs> I have onion layers. <laughs> really, I'm like an donkey. onion. Like Surely somebody once told me I'm like a bird. <laughs> And uh, she was signed by Beth Heller at DreamWorks, who was the partner of Butch Vig, the drummer from Garbage, who produced oh Nevermind. God, yeah. um, so uh, this album then basically, they released I'm Like a Bird, and, and uh, the album was a smash hit immediately. Um, Four, three, two. What are you doing? You're not ready at all. I don't know what you're doing. The themes. The themes. What? Okay. We, we look, look at the art, art and we judge the art, art and we decide if it's a good or fart. This is a segment where Jeez we had discuss <laughs> the album Slave um, and oh. we decide if it's good or fart. I was trying to find when you were singing in previous ones I could learn the songs too. And do you know what? There's just too much speaking. Just too many songs. <laughs> that is one of the main criticisms of this podcast is too, too much, much speaking. Too much speaking. Too many words. 
Um, so we have Nelly Furtado in a sort of uh, the font is uh, reminiscent of Austin Powers. Uh, <laughs> I would say it's reminiscent of the Willy Wonka yes, chocolate bars. Yes, so sort of mixture between Willy Wonka and Austin Powers. I think is what she's going Which for. Which is here. funny because she is not about consumerism nor sex at this point, but those are those two things smooshed together. Well, that Willy Wonka. <laughs> yeah, consumerism. Yeah, okay. Fair Capitalism. Enough. Factory owner. Capitalist. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, you're right. Fucking you're right. Pig. Yeah, actually, a foreign labour as well, foreign slave labour. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Had little um, Oompa Loompas, doesn't that's, it? That's true. Um, so Nelly is uh, lying down on the <laughs> album cover, um, staring, piercing eyes, staring piercing directly eyes. at you, um, and uh, it, it sort of looking forlorn. You could say I think she's forlorn. I think she's. I think she's forlorn over. <laughs> <laughs> She fell on or she fell uh, I would say, um, I don't know if she's forlorn. I'd say she was just, uh, she's not giving a, a bloody F. What it's do you al- think? It's also very much like my childhood, like just lying in fields, you know? Because <laughs> I was surrounded by fields. One of my brother and I's favourite games was to crawl through the long gurst that's been grown for silage, which we shouldn't have been doing, <laughs> and make like tunnels mm. and then play catches in the gut where you could only crawl so you can actually see where the other folk were. And if we had a caddy lamb, like a tame lamb, it's even better because you pretend like alien and that's the alien chasing us through the tunnels. Right. So like that. I think she's doing that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know a lot of the ones we were using there, right? But fair fuck. <laughs> what is silage? Silage is like hay, but instead of drying oots in bales, mm. you plastic You've heard of silos? It. You ever played oh, Stardew Valley? I've never played Stardew Valley, but I've watched my girlfriend, my partner, play yeah. Stardew Valley. Yeah, so. great game, fantastic. Um, they have, you build silos in that to convert A. Hey. So silo is silage? No, this is not the same. <laughs> it sounds, oh, okay. it sounds, sounds about the same. It's, it's kind of like wet hay. Oh. Wet hay. Silage is wet hay. Uh-huh. So yeah. I think it's got more nutrients in it. Right. So this reminds you of silage? Lying in a silage park in a warm, fine summer's day. Just to pretend to be an alien. Lying there. No morph, if you will. Mm. Can I'm we all just agree? Morph. I don't, would you say that <laughs> Wonelli, Marilyn, would you say that Wonelli is a good name for an album? I was thinking about that today because <laughs> if you called a French, you're like, whoa, Christopher. Whoa, crazy. <laughs> like, or whoa, Mario. Or whoa, Liam. Oh, whoa. Or branching out. Like, these are bad names for shows. Do you know what I mean? So What's wrong with branching out? We've been over this. It's more like, it's more like, whoa. I was branching Nelly. out. I was trying different things in the show. Like a horse. Like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Where, 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 where does whoa, Nelly come from prior to. What, I mean, what is the. It's a cowboy thing. Whoa, Nelly. <laughs> yeah, okay. Whoa, Nelly. I think if your name is Nelly, it's fair enough to call you. It is a very fringy title, though, isn't it? You can imagine if there was a comedian called Nelly Furtado and they did a fringe show and it was called Whoa, Nelly, you'd be like, fair enough. If there was a comedian who was doing their debut show at uh, a small pleasant venue, um, big PR money being spent, yep. small venue, new on the scene, good buzz about them, they're called Nelly Furtado, the show's called Whoa Nelly, I'm not going, and it's getting two and a half stars. Yeah, she should have gone for like mental gymnastics to do a, like a reference <laughs> yeah. to the previous gymnast. Or, or, or like a Nelly the Lolophant or something, you know? <laughs> I would love to see a show called Mental Gymnastics at the Fringe and it's just a crazy gymnast going, oh, you didn't let me do it after the things I did. She's a perfect 10. That's what it come out to. She got the perfect 10. Um, so it's a, it's, 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 a, it's fine. It's completely non-offensive album cover, isn't it? It's this. I like it. It's uh, sideways. That's cool. Don't see a lot of sideways people in music. That's true. It's representation for the sideways community. I like it. I like how not done up she is. Do you mm. know what I mean? She's just a person. Do you think she's not done up though? I mean, no, that, okay. look at the eyes. That looks pretty photoshopped to me. I no. I think that's she's her. Portuguese. Girl, but she's not like she's not like like you know what I mean. Like her hair's not done in a certain way. She's not wearing lots of makeup. She's yeah. just wearing like uh, yeah, tank top she's, and she's jeans. She's wearing a tank top, jeans. She's like a wholesome her. Okay. figure at this point. What they're so, going for is the sort of girl next door kind of vibe here, aren't they? Oh, mm. Nelly. <laughs> So, oh, Nelly, have you got any of those spetty bags? Someone's grown. <laughs> Marilyn, yeah. you kind of made reference to this when you were talking about, um, was this before or after or during the podcast when you were saying that, you know, um, this is like her sideways in the field. But then in 2006 and 2004, she's collaborating with Timberland. Timberland. She's doing songs yeah, like, she's a man. She's all grown up. And then she's me. Girl. <laughs> you're teasing me. I got what you want. 
And you got what and I need. Did you feel betrayed? Or did it coincide perfectly with your own journey into womanhood? Uh, it coincided question. perfectly with me bagging it off people. Because <laughs> yeah. it was like, there's this album, More Nelly, and then Folklore, which was like the second album I wasn't allowed to take into art class anymore. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I went into high school. Her sexy album came out. I can't remember the name of it. Loose. Loose. <laughs> She turned loose like she her loose fanny. and her morals and everything, and then I turned loose too because right. she did it, so did I. Yeah, fair enough. Um, the uh, Man Eater by uh, Nelly Furtado brings us to this week's YouTube comment of the week. Um, this is a comment from um, someone called Ju J U. Um, J U. As in a goo put, but yes. a goo put. Mm-hmm. Okay. One year ago, on the song Man Eater, comment reads. This song reminds me of one of my happiest childhood memories. Oh, no, hang on. I've done it wrong. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'll do it again. This song reminds me of one of my happiest childhood memories. I was about four years old and my mom and dad weren't divorced yet. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hot day in my summer hometown, Kufert in Germany. <laughs> Kufert? Kufert in Germany. So we went to the lake. The song was popular everywhere and played on the speakers at the pool. There was nothing then but the pure joy of a family trip. Wow. People get really nostalgic for this music. Wait a minute. They said go to the lake, but there were speakers by the pool? Wow. You've actually fucking uncovered Q Q (laughs) Fortin on right here. That's crazy. I've got my own unhinged YouTube comment of the week. Is it in a German accent? I really enjoyed doing that German accent. I I can do that in a German accent if you want. This is by a user called Truth. Five months ago. On the video for uh, I'm Like a Bird by Nelly Furtado. I'm saying Furtado, but it's Furtado. 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 Nelly Furtado. Okay, this is truth. It's unbelievable to hear this song. It's like I heard it for the first time those 20 plus years ago. The world was definitely in a much better place. Sure, we had the Iraq War. And <laughs> <laughs> sure. 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 My, my 9 11. Well, he goes on. <laughs> sure. We had the Iraq War and 9 11. <laughs> right around the corner. Awful events in history. In my opinion, awful events. But I feel like today we are on the precipice of something so much worse. Time is a strange thing. I wonder if we ever will be able to revisit those days. Revisit those days, I should clarify. Of the Iraq War <laughs> and the tragic events of September 11th, 2001, if you are on that side. I saw a lot of people sounding off in comments of all of her videos saying stuff like, you don't get music like this on TikTok. There was a lot of TikTok hate in all of the YouTube comments that people I read. People were upset about TikTok. And I do honestly think I, I, when you when Liam told me that you suggested this drunkenly instead of Pantera, I was a wee bit upset. But listen, I gave, I, I gave it a listen, open ears, and I was like, oh my God. There's so many cool sounds on this record. It's that kind of trip hop thing where it's you know sampling who, very odd things. Who it reminded me of, who we've covered, Manu Chow. Oh, uh, just, oh, yeah, just yeah. a massive conglomerate of different world music mm. to make interesting pop songs. Although this is more poppy than Manu Chow, obviously. Sure. sure. Um, and it, it's almost like as she became, you know, the Timberland pop star, yeah. you feel like she left a lot of this interesting stuff behind. No, 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 because Timberland's production is fucking incredible. Man. I'm not saying it's yeah, bad. Yeah, but she moves away from the world music. Yes. Yeah. Wait, again, why I think I like this, because in Shatton we have amazing festivals called Folk Festival where we just have folk music from all around the world over five days. Mm. So I always hear like different mm-hmm. genres, folklore, world music, and this album's like that. Yes, smooshed that, together. One of my only notes on this record is ringing bell noise on I'm Like a Bird, where it just goes, ding! And I love it, it's just a wee detail, and it's in the biggest pop song, but it's like... I have two talking points that I want to bring up, mm-hmm. questions to the group. First one, Nelly Furtado famously turned down half a million dollars to uh, pose for Playboy magazine. I remember this. Would you accept half a million dollars to pose naked for Playboy magazine centerfold? For Playboy or Playgirl? Either, either or. Or Attitude the, magazine. The, the Playboy, whatever. Half a million nude <sighs> centerfold. Well, the wrestler, Shawn Michaels, he <laughs> was off. <laughs> Shut up. He, I'm talking about wrestlers. <laughs> the only thing I don't know anything about. He was offered money to do Playgirl and he done it. 
He got his hog out. He got his dang hog out. Yeah. It was tasteful, but he got his hog out. Tasteful hog. I think he had his world championship over his hog. Oh, so you can't see the pain even? No, but you see his snail trail and like his... Well, that's nothing. Yeah. See my snail trail right now. Some people... <laughs> see my clothes. <laughs> Some people like a snail trail, all right? It's not nothing. Sure, but no, it is not, it's nothing compared to being completely new. You could walk past the school if you're snail trail and you wouldn't get trouble. I think you'd get in a little bit of trouble. trouble. Marilyn has to stop bringing a snail trail to school. <laughs> <laughs> there it is over there. Corbin's got it up. Hey, hello. Yeah, that's. I mean, you don't think that's enough? Nothing. You can see both his cum gutters. For the audio listener, <laughs> what um, what's on, a cum gutter? Cum gutter's up on there. <laughs> it's there up on the neck. Shawn Michaels laying down, down suggestively wearing his uh, his wrestling belt over his cock and balls. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it, look, sure, it's suggestive, but it's not the same as appearing actually new. I would pose like that for 50 quid in Playboy. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I would say that. I'm saying, would you get your hog out for Playboy for half a meal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would, easy. Half no, a meal? Yeah. I would kill a man for half a meal. <laughs> I, was, I, would I would kill a man for 50 quid. I'm scared, man. Look at the French coming up. Marilyn, would you pose nude for a half a million? <sighs> Probably. Mm. I mean, like, that's not new to me. And if I could yeah, wear I that belt, I'd do for less. But, like, I think if it, because also if it's your pose and you have can control I, of how you, because we're all going to have naked photos online eventually anyway. Can I just pause you there? Okay. I've just noticed that there is perhaps a, a, a striking juxtaposition between Nelly Furtado's pose in the front cover of this album <laughs> and Shawn Michaels lying naked for Playgirl magazine. And I'm wondering if Nelly Furtado is perhaps, referen- perhaps it's referencing. It's meaningful, you know, she wears a big HBK head. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not surprised. <laughs> this is, I mean, I this is some of the sweetest chin music I've ever heard. Can I honestly say, as a Canadian, she would be a get. Can you stop snorting like a plush hog over there? <laughs> I had to lean in front I like bacon's in the room right now, man. Jesus Christ. Sorry, I don't know what I call it that. The but name is Babe. Yeah, well. Fucking <laughs> if, if it stops. I think let's maybe make a note of, uh, uh, of, uh, of Mary Elaine snorting. Um, in case well, we, we need to put it in out. once so that people know what we are going through. They're called snorks and they're cute. They're not cute. They're fucking disgusting. <laughs> But you're a great guest. What was your other talking point? <laughs> um, <laughs> Nelly Furtado performed for Colonel Gaddafi in a private um, gig for a million dollars, 45 minutes set. Um, four years later, after his war crimes were revealed, mm-hmm. she donated a million dollars to charity. Well, Gaddafi was cool, man, for a while. Yeah. He'd done so much great stuff for like literacy and Libya and mm. shit like that. So I was Gaddafi pilled. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, yeah. He was definitely used. He was used as like, like uh, by, by the American. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> was he, not, he was like, what, I'm scared to say stuff Are you in case anyone pilt? ever listens to this and I've said the wrong thing. Nobody listens but, to this. I won't worry about it. What is well, your take on Colonel Gaddafi? Yeah, what's your, what's your official marriage? I was raised just to be like, regime. Colonel Gaddafi is a bad person mm. because of like war crimes and such. Then I was reading stuff lately, which was like, actually, was he that bad or did he not just fit? the agenda that states had for what they wanted to do. Right now we are doing Gaddafi woohoo, Gaddafi boohoo. <laughs> <laughs> what is it going to be, Liam? Woohoo or boohoo? Ultimately, I think, you know, yes, maybe you improved the literacy of the general uh, Libyan population, but war crimes are war crimes. It's a boohoo from me. Boohoo from you. Gaddafi confused who? <laughs> okay. So confused who? I'm going to remember woohoo. So that's the kind of breadth of opinion you get. It's a broad on church this here it's and enjoying our album. Oh. We, we love different opinions on Gaddafi. What we don't like is noises made from your nose. No. Maybe, maybe I should just go with what Nelly did and actually be like, actually, will she get the money back? Maybe he's a bad man. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? Maybe she actually played it incredibly well. Maybe she was paid a million dollars, put it in a bank with a good interest rate, and then four years later, after she's made the profit, Send it back a million. She's already made like an extra fucking hundred thousand. Like, oh, who's paying her? What you're giving money back to Gaddafi? No, I think she gave it to a charity. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> yeah, for more war crimes. <laughs> yeah, you're going to another country. Keep gassing people or whatever you're doing, bro. But it was because of that. Then uh, loads of other artists who had performed for Gaddafi, who it sounds like had a fucking good taste in music. Mm. By the way, we should get him on. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm sure his face isn't burst on a pavement somewhere in the past. <laughs> His face was so fucked by the end, man. He was yeah, so puffy. Man, he looked pretty bad. Yeah. He needs to fucking get some snail mucin. <laughs> some snail. Liam's been using snail juice on his face. <laughs> it's really, really good. I think it's very much. Yeah, really good. I'm going to try it. What do um, you think about the song Turn Off the Light? <laughs> as a, the as the a video was interesting. Tone? Well, yeah, because it's, it's quite different. So basically, I knew all the songs inside and out. I think I can still sing everyone word for word. But I used to play them all in order and I made up like a little play oh. that went along with all the songs so every song was like a different 
Right, so you mm. sort of gave it this, you, you turned this album in your head into a sort of concept record with one story. A yeah, and I used to just dance through it in the kitchen for an evening and the family would have to walk around me when they went to like <laughs> Max some tea or go feed the dog or something. Um, what what so, was the plot? Yeah. It was like a fairyland realm right. <laughs> where, um, and hey man, like, do, 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 do. hey, like the first ones are like, they're all happy in fairyland. And then, um, but the humans are like bursting through and they're greed and stuff and that shit mm. on the radio of like big, like coming in to knock down their trees. And then um, Baby Girl was about one of them being captured and being really upset. And then... I'm not your baby girl. I'm not I your... think there was like a whole like Stockholm almost syndrome because there's like, it does have some love songs. Mm. And then um, Like a Bird is actually them like leaving that and going off to the city by themselves and there's a whole storyline where basically this Much character like the character's feyland is <laughs> invaded they get kidnapped they escape they go off into the city they get embroiled in a dark sinister yeah. world and then they make it back to feyland but then i'll be it changed yeah i mean the last two tracks are called i will make you cry and scared of you so it doesn't sound like a happy ending to the yeah but i will make you cry it sounds like something from sex and city <laughs> it's like dum, 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 ba, da, ba, da. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not I, baby. I just I don't want to. And the more I think about just special love, I don't want you. I don't know why I sing in my the band, but I liked it. Are there any albums that you know? So you, you do you reckon if we put on the instrumental version of this album, you could sing it from start to finish? I think so, but there's sometimes when I didn't understand the words, where I just I'm like da 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 da. da. <laughs> Apart yeah. from that, yeah, it seems, it's, it's no, reminiscent no, of uh, Roscoe McLennan's famous. Roscoe McLennan sings all the words he knows from Bat Out of Hell," uh-huh. um, in that he knows most of the words, but not all of them. But we'll, <laughs> we'll perform them. We'll, we'll, we'll perform them yeah. with gusto. So maybe we should produce a. I would be uh, first. I would like to fall around to producing live shows as an enjoy an album, a media conglomerate. And I think the first <laughs> one could be Mary Lane Robertson performs all the words she knows to Nelly Furtado's "Well Nelly." I've got some good business deals coming up in Libya, so <laughs> okay, good. I think they'll be into <laughs> stuff. Is that anything to do with your recent uh, backing of Colonel Gaddafi? Shit. <laughs> And I'll do like pose like that, but with a wrestling belt covering yeah. my trunk. <laughs> I love this song. Uh, turn off the line. Uh, turn off the line. I said, no, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, down, down, down. down, 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 down there you see all my dreams. Not, Not everything, everything in this magical world, world is what it seems. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks very much. I like the opening song. Hey man, uh, 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 it looks like rain. I love that. I've been singing oh, it all morning. Oh, that's you're singing it. Indeed. Mm. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 that's that's ironic. What fucking Alanis Morissette? Alanis Morissette, another thing. Was Wingo Lake? Um, it is shadow in the sky and, and it feels like rain. rain. Yeah, yeah. On your no, 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 that's and Alanis Morissette. It's gonna fly. The one swear word she loves is shit. She says yes. shit in so I mean, many songs. This is like the early noughties on a pop record when you're saying shit. That's a little bit risky. I had to like be worried if mum and dad was in the room, I'd have to skip shit on the radio. It's probably my least listened to track because of that reason. Shit on the radio. I loved it. There was, yeah. a, there was a great line in it that I, I think's absolutely fantastic. In the mid late, it goes, it's so much easier to stay down there guaranteeing you're cool than to sit up here exposing myself, trying to break through. You know, it's easy to be a cool cat who just kind of jacks off in the corner. Mm, it's that, hard. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> cool cat who jacks off in the corner? Yeah, sure. You know, Look at that guy it's, jacking it's, off in the corner. He's cool. <laughs> No, it's, as an artist, it's easy to do kind of like anti-comedy. Right. It's harder to just be like, no, nah, this is me being me. Yeah, sincerely going. Yeah, Sincere. of course. There's a great Spencer song. Then in the spotlight, open fire. Hmm? Burn in the spotlight, open fire. Scream without making a sound. Exactly. Open fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what she says. It reminds me of a <laughs> song she says. by the men. I must talk about the men the other week. Yeah. They have a song called... Uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but they go, I want to see you write a love song. I want to see you go down. I want to see it when you try so hard. I want to see it when you turn it around. And it's like they were a noise band and then they started writing songs and they were like, it's easy to make noise. It's easy to make hard to understand art. It's difficult to make really good uh, art that everybody can enjoy. Yeah, and also, I mean, it's it's more of a risk, isn't it, to be putting yourself out there, a sort of element of vulnerability to saying, no, I'm writing something sincere and meaningful rather than something that's just, like, fun or stupid or yeah. sarcastic. Um, and, yeah, it says Nelly Furtado, her, her, um, her, she, she's not someone who's afraid of a little bit of a sincerity, even though a lot of it is fun. Yeah, it's very uh, fun. A lot of the world beats as well. I mean, she obviously, she di- dips into her Portuguese heritage. Um, there's some songs on here that reminded me of funny other songs. I remember... Uh, listening to Party, which is sort of dance hall, sort of dub song. Um, that uh, reminded me of the, do you remember the last Ketchup song? It has the same sort of rhythm beat as that. I said, ah, hey, ah, 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 hey, 
What's that called? That kind of song, kind of not a bossa nova. It's called like a fucking paddle or something. Yeah, yeah. So there's like cool beats like that on here. Um, that uh, that's what reminded me of Manuel Charles. The way it sort of effortlessly managed to introduce world music into pop songs, um, which I think was done very well, especially for a debut album. Um, launching a new pop star, I thought was very impressive. I fucking dug it. I fucking dug it. Um, We're gonna do tattoo with who? Tattoo boo Let's let's go into it. Ah, what do you guys review and tattoos? We're gonna Google them and search and then we'll choose if it's Tattoo Woohoo or Tattoo. <laughs> we're judging the ink, yeah, that's what we do. Do 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 full sleeve or then their lower comes up. <laughs> This week we are doing tattoo woohoo, tattoo boohoo. Does Nelly Furtado have tattoos? No! But <laughs> um, she doesn't have tattoos. Do you have tattoos? Guess. Yes. Yeah, I would say you have some sort of like mythical uh, folklore kind of reference tattoo thing somewhere. A trow on your toe or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A centaur on, or something like that. A, a fawn. I have none. None tattoos? Wow. No tattoos, no. What's that about? I, there's a few that I've wanted over time and then I'm just like, ugh, I kind of make my mind up. And I, my, one of my biggest anxiety dreams is always I go get a tattoo and then it looks like shite. Mm-hmm. So I've just never gotten a tattoo. I've regretted all three of my tattoos. <laughs> I don't really... I'm getting another one though <laughs> in like two weeks. And it's probably the silliest one of the lot of them. What so get? I'm getting a cowgirl on, back, on horseback shooting a gun. Oh, that's cool. On my arm. Is it that cool, like, old school tattoo style? Yeah. It's pretty old school. I'm going to get it for Brighton. Coming up to Glasgow tonight. Mm. Uh, so, Nelly Furtado does not have tattoos, but at her award ceremony in 2006, when she was partying up with Timberland, she had airbrushed tattoos <laughs> put on her. Now, why don't you do this, Marilyn? Because then so, you can just wash it off. That's up. a good idea. So, this is a temporary tattoo. Oh, uh, she's God. wearing sort of a glamorous uh, dress. Um and is uh, has got purple. Are they? Is it thorns? Flames? Looks like fire, me, bro. Fire, fire, thorn, flames. Um, full, Wait, was this sleeves. the same era's fire shirts? Those black shirts, the flames up them. This, <laughs> no, this was, was a wee it? bit after that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would say this album was like fire shirt time, and okay. then this was like the beginnings of hipster. Uh, no I one was to, wearing chains anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I have to say, I mean, it's, it, it actually looks like she's got a bike chain holding up the dress as well. Um, <laughs> I, I have to say, I, I think doing this once for like a fancy award ceremony <laughs> is quite funny. I, I think that's quite cool. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a it's a woohoo, even though it's a temp tat. It's, it's a, a woohoo for me. That is a thing that I've always wanted to dress up as. It's one of the albums I always thought about picking today was um, my Mastodon's Hunter album. <sighs> So good, so good. But Stargasm, I wanted to paint myself like I think the song would be in the form of a human body mm. and just wear that one day to a nice fancy event. Happy I feel like maybe I just wish I was Nelly Furtado. But yeah, I'm not picking up on to, that. To paint my body like the Stargasm song and just go to a nice event where I was wearing nice dresses, but I just painted like a mastodon song. What did you think mm. of uh, Nelly Furtado's most recent album? 2017, I think it was. It's like a more of an indie. I didn't listen to it. No, no, yeah, I'm nobody really listened to it. I don't think it was very I well I saw received. being interviewed about her on Loose Women. And I I'm like, what's happened? She's gone, like, from being, like, a total hippie to being Timberland to Loose Women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's, she's become a mum, which yeah. is what happens to all of us in the end. We will become mums. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it net. was, I think 2017 album was very well received, but it was just nobody, it wasn't on the radio and it wasn't on anything. Mm. So peop, the people who listened to it were like, oh, she's back and she's good. But... It wasn't. I'm nope. gonna get a listen. Yeah, it, it, I it gets that much. It gets fives and sixes across the board. Yeah. Out of five, like three out of, out of ten. Yeah, oh, I'm so, talking shame. So yeah. middling, middling yes. reviews. Yeah. I do my, I do my research. I know what I'm talking about. Um, Corbin, see if I'm talking shame. Thank you Don't for correcting, up. correcting right. me every single time. Stay, stay there. It's very good, very good of you. No correct. more telling me I'm talking shame from everybody, please. Uh, it describes the electronic songs as jarring. Stop it. <laughs> What are you talking about? Thank you, Corbin. This isn't your, what the job is. Thank you for your input. You're correcting Christopher. Uh, <laughs> no! Cut that out. Um, Marilyn, what's your favourite song on this album? I don't know, Kane. It depends <laughs> what mood I'm in. Because oh. I used to be obsessed with um, 
Uh, he's obsessed with, uh, what's one? I've seen a man cry. I've seen a man die inside. I've seen him say to me that he is only mine. Baby, you gotta do what is best for you. Never let me in. Not even burn, baby. Tell me I'm the one. That's baby girl, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, um, I, on M- MSN Messenger, that's not me. That was my, that, that was, was that not was, my that noise. My, the stomach came out. Uh, my, my s- <laughs> Your stomach came I out. I thought there was know. another pig in the studio. <laughs> fucking hungry I, pig. I have bowel disease, so you're actually being ableist right now. <laughs> Like a big. I just, um, I just, not me. It wasn't me. Cuts me in the it's fucked up. But on MSN Messenger chat days, I every day for as long as it took changed my name to the next line of that song. <sighs> Have you ever seen the Livers Hard Live? No, I think I just die. Yeah, it seems bizarre <laughs> that you haven't since you love just, it so much. But I grew up in Shetland, so I never really thought you could see bands you like live. You just saw like sixteen year olds cover basket case at the local village hall. Yep. Yeah, okay. So it's close. Do you have the time? <laughs> Do you listen to me speak? Um, can I just say how <laughs> it's offensive? It's so I'm refreshing, even... by the way, to have a guest who's not afraid to just sing an entire chorus of a song because that's what we do it. every single episode. Yeah. And then guests come in and they never sing. Oh. Mary Lane, it's almost like we're not here at some point. She's just singing no. away. You've been a great guest so far, Mary Lane. It's what interesting we asked you why your favourite song was that song that you chose. Because do I want to like that? Carry on. Right. Every week we have something called putting songs on a playlist. <laughs> yeah. That's the feature. It's called putting songs on a playlist. Guess what we do? You can access the playlist at playlist.st or enjoy a playlist.st in your URL bar. That will take you to a website which will say, Do I listen to it on Spotify or Apple Music? Neither have been updated for at least a year. It would have been updated by the time. Okay, like they will be updated. Like, yeah. They will be updated by the time this comes out. Uh, which of these songs would you put on a playlist? So every week we had one from the album and then one inspired by the conversation. So what album, what song would you put on from this? Baby Girl, like you said? Or? Um, that one or I Will Make You Cry. Or, I've been so scared of you quite a lot recently. Or my, oh, jeez Louise. Um, I think that I'll go for Baby Girl. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Marilyn's just had a baby girl as she was saying that. Congratulations. That was just... Uh, <laughs> Gonna call girl. her Nelly after Better girl the... Better girl when I've been... been, been so I've never driven to get 10 marks out of 10. That's my baby's Nelly. That's... <laughs> Baby Nelly Kim. Um, the song I'm going to put on is going to be Hey Man, the opening track. Feels Like Rain. I think it's, I think it's a great song. Love it. I think it sums up the album pretty well uh, in terms of its uh, mashup of world music and pop hits. I have three songs where I put on it. Okay. I like this. Shit on the radio, I'm like a bird, turn off the light. You're going for this, you, you go for that. Have you listened to that one or did you just listen back to the three singles everybody knows? Yeah. Those are the three singles, everyone. How about a little bit of a deep dive yeah. every now and then, diving. Christopher? I fucking looked at any timbers. No, you're, you're not deep diving, you're surface swimming. There's you're a reason. You're dipping your little toes Sing in. Sing me, I will make you cry right now. You're standing in a puddle. <laughs> I will make you cry. I mean, that's almost it until you got that last <laughs> note. Yeah. He tried. Um, I will make you cry. It's getting further away. Shit. <laughs> did you not listen to it? I will make you cry. All right. Cards on the table. Did you both enjoy the album? I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. <laughs> what was that? I just shrugged. That was fine. Did you, what did you want us to do? Did you want us to become as uh, fertile pilled as you? I'm used to me playing this the album to people and people being like, I just know, no Matt, really. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm surprised to hear that it's like such a turn off for people because mm. it, it's, it's pretty inoffensive, I would say. It was um, way more interesting than I thought it would be. It was be. more interesting than I thought it was going to be. I'm probably not going to be adding it to my, you know, uh, record collection anytime soon. However, if I was... The bop, it, sh- we have it, a bop shopper here. Well, that's true, actually. But let me just, okay. let me just, um, if I were, for example, I mean, uh, Icelandic comedian B Babylons um, told me that when she was in Shetland mm-hmm. um, and they were driving around in Mary Lane's car, um, the only <laughs> CDs that she had was either um, heavy metal, which be, uh, despite being um, Icelandic, is not into heavy metal. So the only non-heavy metal CD in the car was Nelly Furtado's Wo Nelly, and they listened to that for an entire week whilst driving around Shetland. If I was in Shetland, <laughs> and Mary Lane was driving me around, and Wo Nelly was playing, I think I would not be turned off by that situation. The first time. Not, to be, not to say I would be turned on, that would be fucked up. <laughs> but but I would not, not enjoy it. <laughs> what? 
Do you know what? I usually have my cash. Is that not clear? <laughs> for these I'm telling you, if I was in Shetland and she was playing it, I'd be like, this is fine. For the these? first time she played it, though, because I'd imagine this, you were you were waterboarding, like, uh, Gaddafi himself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> probably what he did. Um, which is fine. Um, <laughs> Gaddafi, yeah. I say good enough. Yeah, I don't say good enough. No, I'll say that much. Um, okay, so I usually in my car have the Lord of the Rings Fellowship soundtrack oh, for God. these situations because it works really well driving in Shetland. Yes. Could it be an evening so star? So is that the song you're going to put on as your bonus down. choice? The... Well, I just I didn't realize it had to be related to the discussion <laughs> today. <laughs> you thought we should put on any song that you want in the whole yeah, world? Yeah, so I was like, obviously, <laughs> You can Perfect put Exceder you can put star, by okay. Mason versus Princess Superstar, you know? Uh-huh. One, two, three, four. Let me scream if you want some more. Like, ah, uh-huh. push it, push it. Watch me working. I'm perfect. Yeah, you can't put that one. Oh, <laughs> You can put Stargazer by Master. Don't know that so much. You can put on a song from the Lord of the Rings want. soundtrack Anything if you want. you want. Anything you want. Yeah, no, maybe I should just put down the arc theme. <laughs> <laughs> You've got old theme from Lord of the Rings. I'm up for that. So this this episode's about Nelly Furtado's Whoa Nelly. Looks like Whoa Nelly's back on the menu, boys. <laughs> this our baby girl's back on the menu. <laughs> What's that you smell? Furtado. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Nelly Furtado smells like? <laughs> Bacon. Oh. Oh, I think floral. So I'm going to stick on... She smells like floral. I'm going to stick on shit on the radio. You're sticking on Hey Man. You're sticking on... Uh, I think it was Baby Girl on the first two go. tracks. <laughs> We've done a real deep dive this Yeah, week. yeah, just a little big snort. There you go. Is that, uh, that pig plush is back. <laughs> um, that was me. <laughs> uh, am I, so what's your bonus choice going to be? Is it going to be the, the orc theme from Fellowship of the Ring, Stargasm by Mastodon, <laughs> or that other song you brought up apropos <laughs> of completely nothing? Any song that you've mentioned in the last hour. I mean, Princess Superstar makes sense because it's also the song that hit me during my slutty phase. That and my humps, <laughs> my black eyed peas. I was like, man, eater, that, those three tracks. That means so many boys' arms. I think that I will pick... I'll go Stargasm by Mastodon. Yes. Okay. It's such a good track. It's not my favourite Mastodon record, but... Um. Well, no, but do you know what it was? It was the first one I listened to the whole way through that got me on to listening to like Leviathan and going Hell back yeah. in time. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. And Crack the Sky. Crack this guy's my f- I, I cried listening to Crack this guy this week. Uh, my bonus track is going to be a song by Blood Orange from his album Freetown Sound featuring Nelly Furtado. Oh, really? Guest vocals. Um, it's called Hadron Collider. Wow. Um, I love Blood Orange. I spoke about him before. He's from Ilford, right next to me. His school, Chadwell Heath School, 20 minutes from where I'm at school. Love Devonta Hines. Love Testicles. Love Lightspeed Champion. Love Blood Orange. Even Testicles didn't like Testicles, though, famously. I, well, I do. I love him. I think wow. he's great. And he's okay. done a fucking uh, duet. <laughs> with, uh, Test that he's a Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get it. That's good. Um, Chris, what's your bonus <laughs> that is, track? That's a funny name for a band. Uh, I'm going to stick on Work It by Missy Elliott, produced by Timberland, who okay. produced Loose. Timberland. Is Work so It the one special. where... If you work it, let me work it. it. Let me do my dad flip it and reverse it. It's your, your primitive yum yum. It's your primitive yum yum, and if you got a big woo, let me search it. If you got a big woo, let me search it. If he's got a big and then an L for us, please. Yeah. <laughs> so glad we're doing video now that we can search. capture people doing it. <laughs> yes. Spotify is in the mud. <laughs> oh, it is now. They're doing the old fucking uh, stream, um, whatever. Thank you so much for listening to. Did we enjoy an album? Uh, I, I enjoyed it more than I thought it was going to, but mm. uh, it's still probably not my thing. But I think fair, fair fucks to Nelly. I'm giving it a woohoo. I enjoyed it. Mm. Did you enjoy it? I had to listen back to it for this, and I liked it, but I don't think I could listen to it as much as I did when I was 14. Yeah, no, 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 no. That was probably a symptom of uh, mental illness. <laughs> You're listening to Enjoy a Diagnosis. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for listening. Mary Lane, thank you for being a wonderful guest to come in and sharing one of your favourite albums with us. It's such a pleasure to have you. We'd love to have you back sometime to talk about uh, uh, Pantera. I think uh, Baroness, Green and, we were green and Yellow album. Well. Yeah, okay. Two Mass part album. Baroness, Pantera. Um, if you uh, want to check out more of Mary Lane's stuff, uh, she is on... Uh, what, 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 where should people get you? The, the internet. On the internet. Wait, when does this come out? Uh, in about a month's time. What does that mean? Does that mean April? Like April, yes. Oh, well, I might have a show just happening on the 22nd of April. Well, I do, but I don't care if this has been yet or not. Okay. What is it? Where is it? 
It's the Stan Comedy Club. I'm trying to sell it out. Okay, in Edinburgh? Oh. In Glasgow. In Glasgow. I'm doing, a, I'm doing an April. extra date in the Stan on the 22nd of April, 5 Fantastic. p.m. on a Saturday. Maybe we can bring this forward a wee bit. I think this will be out before then. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go uh, see Mario at the Stan. And by then as well, I suspect your Fringe show will be on sale as well. It's on sale already. It's on sale already. So. 22 tickets. Great. Okay. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Go see Mario at the Fringe shows. There's really cool Fringe shows. Um, and it's You've been never a, seen one no, I've never seen one But <laughs> I'm not interested In going to see it But I do know That it's very good <laughs> These women Tell me jokes <laughs> I'm trying to Fucking help people I feel like Colonel Gaddafi Man just trying to Help people And people just Shit on you And burst your face Open on the pavement And shit Yeah, yeah. Marinette anyway. thanks, for, thanks for coming And bursting Chris's face open <laughs> Um, good Thank luck. Good me. luck with your uh, your your uh, 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 your Glasgow show and uh, and thank you, listener. Please get Mary Lane online at, at Mary Lane Robertson. Is that right, Mary Lane R? Mary Lane R on Twitter mm. and at Mary Lane Robertson on everything else. Great. Um, I forgot my name on Twitter. And enjoy your week. Thanks so much for listening, and we will see you soon. Bye bye. Peace yeah. and love in the new millennium. <laughs>